Rewind Show podcast. It's time, it's time to bring you yet another amazing episode. And now, and now. welcome your host, Rob, the face for Radio Burgess. Enjoy the show. Hello, hello, and welcome to the 80s Rewind Show podcast with me, Rob the Face Radio Burgess. Welcome along to today's show. Uh, before I start the show, I've got myself a sponsor now. I've actually got myself in order and got a sponsor. Uh, it's called AnyTech. Anyway, let me play your jingle. AnyTech, your local home and business IT support service. Book an appointment today on 07745 178665. AnyTech, we can do that. Anyway, so I had some computer trouble. Uh, I found that guy. Uh, from any tech, his name is Mike, and he's a lovely fella, and he fixed it for me remotely. So if you need anything like that, he's the guy. Anyway, today's show, I've got an absolute belter for you. I've got the tornado of talk, a lovely gentleman by the name of Rusty Egan. Now this man, this man surely is a British institution when it comes to music. He played in various bands uh, in the 70s, and then after that he went to DJ at a club called Billy's, and after that, uh, the Blitz, which was pretty much the foundation of uh, the new romantic movement. So this guy's DJing skills and this guy's music selection was responsible for an entire genre in the early 80s. I mean, that does not happen anywhere apart from this one man, Rusty Egan. I had a wonderful chat with him and he's a lovely, lovely man. And uh, it was just a pleasure to talk to him. And uh, he's a very funny guy. You can hear on the interview. Now, Rusty does swear in the in the interview. I'm going to tell you that flat out now. So if you've got any children, just be aware. Um, because I didn't censor it. Because I like to have people just talking as they are comfortably. So there's a few swear words in there. Um, but that's just Rusty's way. And that's just the way things are. And that's how I want to keep things on this show. Anyway, I'm going to stop waffling. Um, if you can, like and subscribe. That would be amazing. Um, and don't forget, um, if you want to get me, you can get me at the 80s Rewind Show at gmail.com. Yeah, again, that's the 80s Rewind Show at gmail.com. If you want to say hi, talk to some 80s, or you know what someone that might want to talk to me, like a guest. That would be amazing. And don't forget to spread the love for the show. Anyway, Rusty Egan, let's get to it. So going way, let's go way, way back to the start. What was um, the, like, your first sort of music you was into? Was there music in the house growing up? I'm was Irish. I'm Irish. So if you want to go back that far, I'm from an Irish musical family. My parents right. had a band. Oh, wow. Awesome. And what did they play? My dad played all wind instruments, i.e. saxophone, clarinet, flute, all the saxes, alto, you know, soprano, um, yeah. clarinet, and uh, sang. He sang. And then in the daytime, he was a tailor. Making, right. making clothes made me a tonic soup when I was a like, teenager. <laughs> and um, my mum, she played the organ accordion, but also the bass pedals. Right. If anybody knows, there's a band called The Doors. They didn't have a bass player because you just played the root note on your foot. Yeah, and then you play the keyboard. So, um, what was his name? Man, 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 Ray Manzarek. Yeah, Manzarek. One yeah. of my favourite. I mean, Riders on the Storm with that bass. Do 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 do. Yeah. These days, he would just create a loop, which is what Ed Sheeran does. Ed Sheeran just clicks with his foot, and he does his bass loop, and he clicks with his foot, and he changes the chord to the chorus and the verse. It's just about loops. Yeah, you know. And that's the sort of so is that like an Irish influence when you was younger coming in quite quite an Irish sounding. I love Irish and I love Van Morrison and I loved them and I loved um, U two and I loved uh, Phil Lynott and Clance, Clancy and Clanad and yeah. uh, you know Mary Black. I like Irish music a lot. I like Ireland. I, I'm Irish. It's all there. So it was it was quite good that I joined the Skids in Scotland. You know. Yeah. <laughs> and Mitch being Scottish, <clears throat> and I met up with Simple Minds in Scotland, Mick McNeil, possibly one of my favourite keyboard players ever. All that mm. is basically what started Moby. You know what I mean? Everything yeah. that we did, Gary Newman, Ultravox, Craftwork, all that by the 90s, you get all these DJs going about and house music when it all happened, when it all started. There's even a documentary called, uh, there's a documentary called We Started It All or something like that, where yeah. it all started. And it's sort of Paul Oakenfold. Paul Oakenfold was a plugger for a record company. 
Pete Tong worked in a record company <laughs> and a record shop. <laughs> All these people were just bods that sold records, you know. Yeah. And they were like, there's a big difference. I am not sort of, well, the only bloke who would register me would be Greg, Greg Wilson. Right. Greg, Greg Wilson, who's the equivalent of Rusty Egan in Manchester. Right. Oh, he before the Hacienda. Greg yeah. Wilson is the late 70s, early 80s DJ who uh, also adapted very quickly to electronic beats, whereas most of them, most DJs, like, like right now, it's 2022. Most DJs all do the same thing. Yeah. Most. And every now and again, you go, have you heard of this guy? And you go, he's not a DJ, he's a producer. See? And they'll all go, <laughs> well, what's the difference? I say, well, a producer's a bloke who makes his music in his studio, writes it, programs it, but nobody wants to listen to it. So what he does <laughs> is he DJs, and then everybody hears his music and go, bloody hell, you're amazing. David August, you're amazing. He goes, I'm not a DJ, I'm a producer, because DJing is easy. <laughs> I, I go on stage and I go, guess what? I've got David Getter's finger too. Uh, 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 uh. You know, <laughs> writing songs is hard. Yeah. Um, I could argue it on here. I could argue right now. Okay. Um, I go, name me a DJ that writes a song. And they'll go, Fat Boy Slim. I go, Luke, <laughs> sample. No, he wrote E B low loop sample. And I go, name yeah. me a DJ that wrote a song. And I go, David Getter, no, never wrote a song. <laughs> Sia wrote the song. Oh, he doesn't write songs. Right, let me explain, right? You're in your mm -hmm. house. Yep. I send you a bad record. Yeah. But you listen to it. And the end of that record. There's a vocal, and the vocal, you say, I like that vocal at the end. And then you go, let me take that vocal, loop it, add a bass line to it, send it back to me. It comes back yeah. to me, and then I go, oh, I love what you've done. And then I write a verse and send it back to you. And then you go, you know what? There's this band that I love. And I love the singer. Why don't we see if she can sing it? And then you yeah. send it to this girl and she says, I love it, but I'd like to add that. And the bottom line is called collaborating. And what happens now is you get a credit for a record and there's 20 people in the credit. But right, right now yeah. I'm chasing, I'm chasing the guy from um, Groove Armada because they, they right. split up. And I, I absolutely love Groove Armada. I'm yeah, also right. collaborating with Vandal Moon on a track. I'm collaborating with Wolfgang Fleur on a track. But I've already done mid year Tony Hadley, Peter Hook. I mean, I collaborate because I yeah. write songs and then mid year Peter Hook, Tony Hadley will say, it's good, but it's not right. And then they'll change <laughs> it. But the bottom yeah. line is if you start with an idea, if you yeah. have some idea, and some DJs have some amazing ideas, but they can't write song. Yeah. Now, Darren Emerson was an amazing DJ. And then right. he became an act, didn't he? He became a yeah. guy who was in a band. So yeah. when you started to get DJs that were in a band and you went, Underworld, no, 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 they were a band. They were called Fleur, right? Oh, yeah. oh, um, so you go, uh, uh, Andy Weverall, no, he's a DJ. He's not in a band. So you, yeah. you end up getting Darren Emerson uh, or um, uh, what they called? Um, I forgot. I forgot her name now. Dido and remember Dido. Uh, uh, and, yeah, I yeah. remember like Eminem and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and, so, and you get like um, it's all right now. Don't you worry, Ian Marsh, Marsh, Marsh. Yeah, you know the beloved, right? Yeah. So, so, so what happened was the DJ bloke became a band, became a, right. an artist. Yeah. I mean, do you think, um, 
like being a musician originally, like with the rich kids and stuff, that helped you write DJ records, if you see what I mean. Well, what you're doing right now is what people do in the pub. Yeah. Have a chat with a bloke. Yeah. But if you've got a great knowledge about cards or football, you could be talking and talking and talking. So everyone's got a podcast now, right? So the point is, if you're good at something, people will like it and follow it. And if you're not, you go, why is that bloke on the telly? Why is that bloke on the radio? He's bloody rubbish. You know, and you go, (laughs) why has that guy got 200 million bloody followers? You know, and and, and the point really is, is, you just do something and you're good at it. Well, when you're, yeah. like, unsure of yourself, like me, I could walk out on stage at the O2. I have no mm-hmm. problem talking to 1,000 or 16,000 people because yeah. I just do me. But if you said, Rusty, I want you to be an actor and read these words and walk out onto a stage in a theatre and I want you to become <laughs> this person, yeah, a role, I go, oh, my God, I don't know if I could do that. That's called acting, Rusty. You know? Yeah. So that's really hard. So right. if something's really easy for you, put a record on. Now put another <laughs> one on. You know? Yeah. It's not rocket science. <laughs> well, if you were in a band and you were doing a medley, and you go, right, what we're going to do is we're going to do Fade to Grey, yeah? And then we're going to do uh, All You Ever Wanted, All I Ever Needed, yeah? And then we're yeah. going to do Far, Far Fashion. I don't mm-hmm. want you to drop the beat. Right? right, I'd count the bars, yeah. wouldn't I? One, yeah. two, three, four, boom, 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 yeah, do, 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 I'd count the bars. I've gone up to DJs and I've gone, you've got a vocal clash. And they go, what? I say, you keep vocal clashing. What are you talking about? I say, there's a build, there's a drop, there's a vocal. Yeah. You're still banging away with the drums while the vocal started. That's the yeah. bit where you fade out the other record. He goes, oh, I don't give a toss about that. I'll just put one record on. And I'm going, well, you're disrespecting the art. When yeah, you hear sorry. a DJ mix, like like I, I have heard people, you think He's miming, mate. There's no way he did that mix. <laughs> he can't have done that mix. That mix is so good. You know what I mean? And there yeah. are people, Frankie Knuckles, I was on a roof in Ibiza and he was sitting down, God forbid he had arthritis or something, you know. And yeah. the, the, the music was just one long, never-ending, beautiful, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you were like, how does he do that? <laughs> and I don't know if anyone wanna... knows if they're interested. There's a program called Mixed in Key. Yeah. Um, Pete Tong supports it. I still haven't got my head around it because they give you a graph E flat, A flat, D flat, major. And they go, yeah, but all yeah. the A's and all the D's. And you can't mix a D with an F. And you go, I just want to press a button and it does it for me, you know. <laughs> and I do write to them and I go, guys, guys. Um, they, they, it's a great program, and I pay for it. Um, yeah. And and my laptop then gives me the key because I've got the key. I just do it by That's ear, right. yeah. and I go, "All I ever wanted." Fade great. No, that doesn't work. And I can't mix yeah. them together. But you can mix yeah. them together when there's no musical bit, which means just the drums, right? Yeah. So that's what mixing's about: get, getting the drop right. So yeah, it's, when, it's like um. DJs become quite visual now, isn't it? Like people can see the audio waves. Like with mixed in key, you can see the key. It's changed completely, isn't it, from when you started back in the day? Yeah, yeah. But when I when I started back in the day, uh, I actually have got a front cover of uh, um, Norman Fatboy Slim saying mm-hmm. um, Rusty Egan was the first um, DJ that I looked up to as a name wow. DJ. Before what happened was you went to a club. And the club was the brand. You didn't know who the yeah. DJ was. And not only that, yeah. he was in the dark. You didn't even see it. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, yeah. And you just heard the music. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes he was up a ladder. There's no way you could even wave at him, you know what I mean? So, um, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't even hear anything that you wouldn't hear in another club. Yeah. 
And they all went yeah, yeah. to the same record shop and bought the same records. <laughs> and in that shop was Pete Tong selling it to them. <laughs> and he was going, mate, yeah, could nice. I carry your bags? And Froggy, who was the DJ of the time, said, no problem, mate, come with me. Which is the great yeah. thing about everyone. You always bring along the next generation. Say, sure, mate, I need to go to the toilet. Can you put this record on? You didn't need yeah. him to put the record on. You just gave him the opportunity to put the record on. And then he got the bug. And it went yeah. down so well. He went, oh, I want to do that again. <laughs> you know what I mean? And sometimes you have yeah. to let them uh, fail. And then you go, yeah. okay, it's 1 a.m. It's peak time. It's the middle of the night. What record do you want to put on? And he'll say, I think this one would be great. And you put it on and it clears the floor and you go, <laughs> watch the master. <laughs> there is an art to it. So, um, and a lot of them, a lot of like pubby, clubby, Friday night, you know, I don't do requests, name of Fat Tony's book. I gave him yeah. his first job, Fat Tony. First, really? Exactly like I just said then. Just dropped him in at the deep end, 3,000 feet, Friday <laughs> night. You're on. You know, um, and a, a lot of these DJs, I, I'd like if any of them listen to you, if any yeah. overweight, uh, <laughs> I've been doing this 20 years, mate, type miserable fuckers that are called <laughs> the DJ. Yeah. Um, are listening to this, retire. <laughs> Go home. Don't leave the house. <laughs> Why? Why? Because, <laughs> because during COVID, what happened? You had no work. Yeah. From records to laptops to memory sticks to controllers, the industry is continually changing. Yeah. And the next generation have all got David Getter's finger as well. <laughs> <laughs> and the previous generation have all got Jackson 5, you know, I want you back, and they've all got the big floor fillers. Yeah. You're not adding anything to the mix that we haven't heard before, mate. If you yeah. can't smile and be happy and be nice to people, even though they're irritating and they want to hear it now and they were outside having a cigarette and, oh, can you play Beyonce? <laughs> They are annoying. That's why you've got headphones. You just put them on. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to hear them. Turn the volume up. But the point really is, is that sometimes they run up to you and they say, can you play? And it's yeah. a bloody good idea. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I mean, it was, you know, I've been waiting all night for you. I've been waiting. The whole place will go crazy to a record that you don't like. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> When I used to um, DJ in clubs, they used to come up with their phones and say, can I play this off of YouTube? I used to get that a lot. Well, they don't, yeah, Sean. they don't understand. But, you know, you, you, Drive you, mad. when you're in a hospital talking to a doctor, he doesn't call you a twat because you don't understand. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just need to do this. Why? <laughs> Why can't you just do that? <laughs> well, because I have to stick a needle in your arm. Why? <laughs> can't I just swallow so something? <laughs> Yeah. So did you did you DJ before you started DJing at Billy's Club? Did you do a bit before that? Or was that never. your main start? No, never. No. Wow. What I did was, when I was about 16, I went to the local disco because there was a band on. Right. They were called Bojangle. And the drummer right. had an amazing drum kit. And I was a big fan of um, All Right Now. Oh, I love Simon yeah, Kirk three. and Bad Ooh, Company. Yeah. And I, and I loved, obviously, John Bonham. And I loved drummers. Yeah. So I went to this thing. And then uh, then the DJ in those days was like, yeah, well, thank you very much, you <laughs> Bojangle. Yeah, they'll be right back after you hear this. This is Backman Turner Overdrive. You ain't seen nothing yet. And that's when you left the bloody room. And you went and talked to a girl at the bar and, and they were like, oh, I wish the DJ would play Marvin Gaye or something decent, you know. And I say, you know what? If I get him to play Marvin Gaye, will you dance with me? And she'll go, yeah. You try to get him to play sexual... Well, it wasn't even out sexual healing then. You know? right, yeah. But, you know, let's get it on or, you know, I want you or something. Um, which is basically Kendrick Lamar now, I want you. He's That's new, right, yeah. He gave a new single. People will come up and tell you that. Yeah, but they don't know that um, uh, I'm going to call you on the cell phone. They don't know that that's Timmy Thomas. 
Everybody wants That's to right, live yeah. together. Why can't we live together? Um, so, yeah, us DJs, we know where all the samples came from. And, yeah, I did go up and um, and I asked him to play um, uh, Marvin Gaye, but he said, no, but I'll play hot chocolate. And I went, <laughs> you DJs are twats. They're just twats. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know. Yeah, but it's hot chocolate's a floor killer and everyone knows it. No one knows Marvin Gaye. Oh, yeah, great. You know what I mean? So you've got to admit, sometimes these DJs, they just have to fill the floor. Yeah, they, right, they, yeah. they do know about great music, you know. They'll take you in a room and play you a load of jazz you've never heard of. You, I don't even know this stuff. And they'll, yeah. you know, they'll take you down a, what do you call it, a rabbit hole of, you know. Sure, but when you're in a room full of people, you've got to please all the people all the fucking time, you know, or else you lose the That's room, right. you know. So I do get that. But I do think... You know, try to smile. I do do gigs, and the manager of the club comes up to me and says, "Can you be nicer?" <laughs> and I go, "It is pretty difficult to tell a chav about um, what they call that garage. Got a garage, mate? Are you playing garage? Got a '90s garage? Call yourself a DJ? I'm going to complain." You know, and they go up to the bloke, and and and, and the manager comes back and says. If you play garage, this place will turn into a fight. Don't That's play right. garage, right? And then the bloke's coming up going, you got any bloody garage? <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. And then, yeah, the, and then the other one, they want to hear Neil Diamond. <laughs> nah. oh, I love Neil Diamond. <laughs> I want to hear it now. <laughs> so you, so you, you're I... caught between the devil and the deep blue sea, aren't you? Because the manager of the place is saying, can you be nice? I can't be nice to him. He's a thug. <laughs> 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 so did Billy's blow up like straight away was it instantly a hit did it do really well did it take a while to build and what sort of songs were you playing at that time was it sort of well, Craftwork and Bowie and T-Rex um yeah 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 I was no let me let me uh, let me put it into perspective uh, because mm-hmm. Steve Strange um came up to London went to Seditionaries followed the Sex Pistols followed Glenn Matlock uh, tried to be in a band with Andy Chodowski, mm. the manager of Roxy, and they had a band mm. with um, Chrissy Hind. And, uh, you know, he was a cool guy with no money and nowhere to stay, and can I borrow your sofa? And I was a sort Bless of uh, on the dole, in a band on the dole. That's why he had UB40. <laughs> UB40, you know, Jarvis Cocker was on that for 20 years. So, yeah, <laughs> you, you were working, you weren't working, you had a flat, you didn't have a flat. You never had anything... There was no guarantee. People who had guaranteed had jobs. Right. And in the oh, 90s, yeah. they watched Hill Street Blues and couldn't get to the Camden <laughs> Palace. No. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't make it last night. I was watching Hill Street Blues. Oh, you miss Madonna and Prince. Who are they? Oh, you'll, you'll know who they are soon. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, Hill Street Blues. Um, so the point was that I had a record collection before punk. Right. which would have been Lou Reed and, you know, David Bowie and uh, Roxy Music and Jabriath. No, not many people have heard of Jabriath. So basically I was a Bowie fan and I knew a yeah. bloke called David Claridge who had a David Bowie collection and everything was inside a sealed envelope and nobody was going to touch it because only <laughs> he could take it out of the, the folder and place it. So basically <laughs> I had this bloke in the DJ booth and his personal record collection, Bing Crosby, you know, and <laughs> drummer boy. So basically, we just played loads of Bowie, Kraftwerk, Ultravox, and I love magazine, you know, the band magazine. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Gary Newman hadn't made a record, but the Human League had made a couple. Uh, Soft Cell yeah. hadn't made one. Depeche Mode hadn't made one. So no, I just had loads of Grace Jones. I had what you would call a cool blokes record collection because I had punk, I had television, Marky Moon, I had, you know, Little Johnny Jewel, wow. um, I, I had the Ramones and all these kind of things. That, 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 like, um, you can't wrap your hands around a dream, Johnny Thunders. So, no, I mean, I played what you would consider to be amazing music in a bar that nobody plays. <laughs> Everywhere you went, yes. it was like Saturday Night Fever, late this yeah. night. And you go in here and it's Lou Reed Take a walk on the wild side and there's a, is it a man, is it a woman at the bar saying hi? And you were like, I like this place. I mean, I'm playing on Saturday Night Torture Garden. Have you heard of that? No, no. What's that? Is that a record? No, Torture Garden is a rubber fetish club. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, but 
she and me was a shop that sold rubber and leather clothes for dress ups. Right. People who would like to tie you up and do nasty things to you with, with right. rubber items. Anyway, <laughs> the music that they would have on in the background today is probably Nine Inch Nails. So right, the point really was is Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, Barry Adamson played with him, um, played with him in his band. Um, mm. The point was there was a dark side to it, Lou Reed, Berlin, uh, yeah. shiny, shiny velvet underground, shiny piece of leather, Susie and the Banshees, uh, public Love image, it. I could be wrong, I could be right. But before that, the public image, death disco, death disco. There was a dark, yeah. there was a darkness to it. It was a sleazy basement in Soho where, you know, people turned up after the office and getting drunk, hoping to pick up a little boy or girl. Oh, wow. Um, the real Soho. If you look at the film called Christian F, Berlin mm-hmm. Bowie, um, the heroin addicts living on the streets, turning tricks. I mean, the real Soho. Yeah. We love that. We loved yeah. it. it. It kind of gets glamorized nowadays, isn't it? But people well, you know, the song version. Small yeah. Town Boy is about running away from um, homophobia and going to London, mm-hmm. which was a little yeah. bit more acceptable. It was a yeah. whole scene of underground clubs where you could go. And the Anvil by Bizarre was a club in New York. And uh, right. it was very Germanic and it was very men and very, you know, it was even covered by De Krups, a German heavy rock band. You know, it was right. very men, men, men. Now you celebrate being a man with a man. You celebrate yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, one of yeah. my, my fa- favourite DJs, um, is a, what they call a bear. Hi, hi, oh, Sean. Oh, a big, hi, big hi, Sean. Guy, You've he? heard of him. Yeah. I love him. You know, he's like 20 stone bloke, you know. Um, <laughs> there is absolutely nothing um, that, that couldn't, couldn't not be written about in some form or other. I mean, yeah. today there are people that do do enter that area and I, I don't want to talk about it on here because there, there is underground, sure. there is the dark web. You know, yeah, there, yeah. there are places for people to go for whatever, whatever. Yeah. And I, just like Elon Musk and free speech, I think that should be. If you are a pedo, you're a sick person. You have an illness. Yeah. You shouldn't be murdered. You should actually yeah. be able to be looked at as a sick person. I mean, yeah, yeah. you don't, illness. like back in the days of the vampire, they would go out with their pitchforks and 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 hang the, the, the monster who was just basically a sick person who killed a kid, you know, in those films. But all the yeah. locals would yeah. go out with the pitchforks and want to murder him. Um, I'm not supporting in any way. I just think that if you go to the cinema, they shouldn't be censored, that you can't make a film about or you can't make a you can't make a documentary about jimmy savile make the documentary it has to be oh no no you can't make it like yeah they can't mention gary glitter you go why not yeah Yeah. you just can't mention it well they didn't they when the sex pistols went to number one they didn't mention it did they the bbc (laughs) number one blank god hide the queen Number one, <laughs> and the Rod Stewart. You know, <laughs> sorry, we've just uh, brushed that one under the carpet. You can't brush it under the carpet. And in this yeah. today's world of uh, censorship, um, I remember John Lennon. Right, you know, he wrote songs. Um, he was on the cover of his records naked. He was in right. bed saying, "I'm not getting out of bed." until you stop killing each other in Vietnam, you know, and so on and so forth. You know, people yeah. used to take to the streets, you know, rock against racism. Come on, that was punk. That was a Labour yeah. Party. That was like Paul Weller. That was Billy Bragg. It was, you know, music used to say something. You know, yeah. sing yeah. if you're glad to be gay. Sing if you're happy that way. You know, <laughs> and now it's all, oh, can't mention that. Oh, you can't say that. Oh, yeah. you know, let's ban that record. Relax. 
when you want to yeah. come. Oh, no, let's ban that. Let's ban <laughs> Boy George because why? Oh, well, you know, you never know. You never know. Let's just ban him anyway. Yeah, no, it's weird, isn't it? You know? So weird. So I'm probably, I keep tweeting, why am I not being cancelled? <laughs> you know why? <laughs> you keep getting banned on Facebook. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, you're a, Rewind, yeah. we're celebrating the whole 80s, right? Yeah. Um, I remember they were so good to me. I DJed like on the main stage every day. And I would look into nice. the sea of people wearing the pink flamingo, you know. And, of course, I signed Soft Cell. Most people don't know that, you know. Did you? I wow. signed them to my own music publishing company and I backed Steve-O and, and, uh, and I signed B-Movie, Nowhere Girl. And I, yeah, yeah. I, I promoted everyone. I put concerts on. I lost loads of money because I loved it. <laughs> anyway, um, at the Rewind, people were tweeting, I don't know what Rusty Egan's playing, but I don't know it. I was playing Simple Minds, right? Yeah, I was playing yeah. The Smiths. I was playing <laughs> Joy Division. But I had to move into like, um, uh, what do you call it? It's Raining Men. You know, oh, I had to go, stuff. I want to play you some amazing music in excess, you know, all yeah. this stuff. And I was getting tweets going, I, I don't know this. How can you not know that? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I think there's two levels of 80s people, though. There's the ones that were there and remember it and love the real 80s. And then there's, you know, the, the, the visitors, if you like. Well, to say they like I'm them. happy to look at a sea of people and then go through my record box and say, OK, uh, the Blues Brothers. So bad to see so many of you people here tonight. Dun, 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 dun. Talk about sunshine. We're talking about, ooh, wake me up before you go, go. Um, you know, I can do yeah. that. As a matter of fact, I've uploaded a mix called the Nonstop Glitter Mix, which is on, yeah. on my um, mix cloud. And it's an hour of bump, 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 you know. And it's yeah. even got, I kissed the girl. I mean, uh, and it's got, uh, what's his name, uh, hands, touching hands, Neil Diamond. Oh, Neil Diamond. <laughs> and it's got Diana Ross. It's got Diana Ross and it's got Gwen Stefani. Yeah. And it's a fun dum ba da ba bum ba ba mix. But yeah. you, you, at the same time, you're at Rewind, there's 20,000 people in front of you, and you go, I want to I wanna play Simple Minds. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I want to play yeah. Depeche Mode. I want to play the Smiths. So, you know, I don't want to have to do cheesy stuff that you hear in the pub when you're drunk or at a wedding. You yeah, it's heart radio stuff, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, 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 and then people go, no, but we want the cheesy stuff that you play at a wedding. Like, oh, all right. You know? So, so when you moved from um, Billy's to the Blitz, did your playlist change at that point? Or was it exactly yeah, course, the same? Yeah, of course, because you... all, the, all the music and the riot, Fate to Grey had come out. And uh, ballet right. showed up at the Blitz, so it took about a year before they brought it out to cut long story short. Um, Human League uh, did the exactly what I did, rock and roll EP part one, part two. They did that, right. uh, uh, which we mixed with Night Club in, which was our Walto Iggy Pop. Grace Jones yeah. came to Club for Heroes, and then she made the Warm Leatherette album and played wow. Roxy music. And no. Um, the music that I select, even today, if you go on my mix cloud, um, I personally blow in my own trumpet. I think I'm just really good at finding great people, you know, great people who make yeah. music. Um, there are other people I follow, you know, because there are people mm. with radio shows and I, I log in and I go, oh, my God, that's a great record. You know, and I, I'm the first one to share. I never go, I found this band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll say this DJ just played this amazing record. Check out this band. Yeah, I'm the first one to do that. And, um, nice. you know, when you get a meme, I credit the mm. meme, you know. Yeah, nice. Like the yeah, other yeah. day, um, I tweeted Johnny Depp with the words under it, and she made me watch Mrs. Brown's Boys or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she made me watch Mrs. Brown's Boys. But I tagged it to um, Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Because I met Ricky Gervais, and I'm a big fan, mm. and I met him at the National Television Awards at the O2, which was the yeah. only award show that he went to that he lost 
to Mrs. Brown's point. <laughs> <laughs> and I tagged it to him. And I was like, you have to be bothered to come from Hampstead to the O2 to not get an award. That was very nice of you. <laughs> Did you ever meet him back in the day when he was in Serona dancing? Well, I also tweeted of Serona dancing and said, uh, if I did meet him, I would have told him, don't give up the day job. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a bit of a comedian, but he obviously doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And then, so is it true one night you're DJing in the Blitz and Bowie turns up? Is this right? No, no, there's a bit more to the Bowie turned up. There's a girl called Jacqueline Bucknell and Jackie B. She worked mm-hmm. at RCA. She right. was a Billy's girl. Right. But she used to drag me in to see Bill Kimber. And I used to say, have you heard of Sugar Minot? Good thing going. He'd go, no. I said, well, I'm playing it in my club. You'll love it. And then he right, released right. it. Um, and I go, have you heard of this band, you rhythmic? No. And I used to be this walking, talking. I, I went everywhere. I went to Virgin because I was in the skids. I went around all yeah. the rail companies. And have you seen the Kanye West? documentary i haven't now is it any good uh, brilliant you know why if anybody watches okay. it mm-hmm. kanye west is like all those annoying people that have made a mixtape that you don't want to listen to <laughs> and the same with eight mile with eminem he's that little white yeah. kid who thinks he can rap <laughs> and all i've ever done is tell people who are in a position of power like simon cowell or whatever someone who's good and yeah. a lot of it if there's anybody watching this now, uh, wanted to comment, a lot of it, most people say, Rusty Egan turned me on to this. And you get zero out of it. You don't get anything. Yeah. You just get the kudos that I met Soft Cell because of Rusty Egan. I discovered yeah. Ultravox because of Rusty Egan, whatever. And then I had a radio show for seven years. Right. And they're all on my mix cloud. And all the, the tour of Spandau Ballet, all the tracks that I played on tour, and seven years of my favourite David Bowie mixes since uh, we lost David. So yeah. Jackie B used to tell Coco, the manager of David Bowie, about the Blitz. And right. then she said, we're going to make a video for Ash to Ashes. We need to come to the Blitz to get some people to be in the video because David is very aware of the Blitz Club. Wow. Because he also Amazing. went to see the Human League live, you see. And he oh, also he? is quoted in the song Trans Europe Express, Meet Iggy Pop and David Bowie. He also tried to get Michael Rauder, Michael Rauder, the guitar player, to play on the Heroes album. And right. he got Robert Fripp to play on the album. But Michael Rauder yeah. was in a band called Noi. And Noi was being played by me at the Blitz Club and listened to by Ultrapox and yeah. uh, Billy Curry and Majeur. And then if you play Noi, I used to mix Noi with Ultravox as a DJ. Right. I'd mix the tempos together. So you you would basically go, oh, this sort of sounds like where Joy Division were listening to. They'd go, yeah, and I used to play Love with Terrace Apart and E-Music by, by Noi. And uh, mm-hmm. I supported Michael Rowther as a DJ in London. And um, on my new album, I'm working with a band called Future Two from Germany who have got an album out with Wolfgang Fleur uh, on a vocal. And I've got Mm. Wolfgang Fleur from Kraftwerk reading a story on my album. So if you join all the dots, we're all into the same music, the same people. And when David Bowie came to the Blitz, I was on tour. I wasn't there that night. I was in the skids. Wow. Produced by Bill... um, Bill, oh my God, uh, Bill Nelson. And Bill Nelson was in Bebop Deluxe. And Bill Nelson right. made a song called Living in My Limousine, which I used to play in the Blitz Club before right. Cars. And he said to me, mm, that Gary Newman song sounds a little bit like my cars, and, and, you know, my, <laughs> my living in the limousine. Um, and I could link it forever. And what I'm doing right now, next year, I'm going to do an audience with Rusty Egan. And the awesome. thing is, I just don't stop talking. So I like it. I, I like it. I, I'm going to do um, sort of a cheap. I want to do cheap, meaning like 15 quid, just about cover yeah. the cost of the room and the bar and the this and the that and the travel and the hotel. 
if a hundred people come, take away the VAT. Take, you know what I mean? You just about so basically, yeah. rather than being at home, I'll just mm. go out and talk. But I'll bring my laptop. So it's called me and my laptop. And basically, my laptop has got all the album covers, all the records, all the photographs. All the time. I'll have a screen, yeah. Yeah. me with whoever. And then there'll be um, the Rusty Eden Top 30. And I don't know if you know, but I'm the drummer on the scene tune at Top of the Pops. Oh, is yeah, it? With Phil Linnet. So That's I'll, right, yeah. I'll play Yellow the, Pearl. Nice. The, 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 I'll play that bit of music, and then there'll be like this Top 30 pieces of my life and they go to skids or the clash or punk or billy's or yeah you know visage or steve strange or boy george and then you'll be able to ask questions on any of those 30 subjects and then we will also awesome. go off piece yeah. rusty are you gay sorry mate <laughs> sorry we're talking about music you didn't <laughs> strange yeah i know we're talking about music <laughs> and you didn't shake madonna when you had a chance to i know <laughs> I'm not gay. Um, I don't believe you. Anyway, so um, <laughs> the point really is, is yeah, I'd, I'd hate to go to an event where you can only talk about certain things and you can't do the 39 steps. Remember that, Bill? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah I think you're going to, I think you should call it David Getter's finger. I think you're calling it the wrong, <laughs> the wrong thing. Well, David Getter's finger. His finger. That's what you should call it, yeah. <laughs> With a DJ. I've got there. David Getter's finger. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know if you know, but um, when um, 2011, 12, 13, I got reunited with Steve Strange and went on a TV program and did a kind of reunited type thing. It was really horrible and really embarrassing. And I didn't want right. to do it, but the, the carrot, the carrot that they dangled in front of me was yeah. that... Um, the visage royalties, uh, which I'd been chasing for 10 years, were actually yeah. being paid to someone. And that someone was Steve. Right. And I was devastated to find that out because I'd that signed so Steve and yeah. Mark Armand and Dave Ball and me and B-Movie and lots of people and made sure that they always got paid their royalties direct. My company... Yeah made Warner Brothers pay them direct and then just pay my company our share. Anyway, right. and I used to also protect Steve from the day he arrived in London to the day he left, you know. And yeah. I felt that I was the most loyal, honest, open friend. And I was ringing him for 10 years saying, I'm chasing our royalties. I know we're going to get so bad. And then one day, a bloke called Jazz Summers, um, rest in peace, Jazz, an amazing, amazing man who had big life. Um, the only way is up. Oh, um, right, yeah. He was an amazing, amazing record man. He said, I'll find you royalty for us if you give me 20%. I said, let me ask Steve. So I said, Steve, if we give this manager 20%, he'll find our royalties. And he went, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll agree. And, you know, we signed an agreement. And then yeah. he came back and said, well, it's Steve. And I went, what? <sighs> he said, Steve has been getting your royalties. You need to talk so to bad. him. So I phoned him up and said, Steve, so after all these years, while I've been struggling with my wife and three children and I'm not getting paid, my wife was sick and died in 2011. And, oh, and I had my life torn apart. You were getting not only my royalties, John McGeer, who died. Yeah. His daughter had lost all that. And Dave Formula. And mm. Gary Barnacle, the most amazing sax player. You've had all our money. So bad. And then he just said, yeah, well, it was all me. Visage was all me. You were nothing. And piss off. And I was so upset. Wow. I, I went online. And, of course, all the Visage fans went, you're just a jealous, disgruntled member. You were nothing. You're not even a drummer. You know. So <laughs> I took all that crap on the chin. I didn't actually. What are you talking about, you idiot? You fell into an entire horrible online. <laughs> 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 took it on the chin. He, you were terrible. So Steve ends up going to hospital, and I think everything about him is a lie. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. Everything he told me yeah. was a lie. So I, I sort of did a joke about a sort of Michael Jackson video, you know, with like Steve <laughs> in a hospital surrounded by angels, you know, you know yeah. one of those Jarvis Cocker moments, you know. I'm going, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, really? 
really, you're in hospital, you know, oh, Rusty, I'm in hospital. And I'm going, you liar, you, I, I wouldn't let it lie, you know, but I should have. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I couldn't believe it because mm. everything I, was a lie. It was all a lie, you know. And then his manager got on the phone, who I introduced him to. Yeah. And his manager said, we've registered the name Visage and the Blitz Club and you're not getting anything. That is so wrong. So wrong. Everything was so wrong. And you know yeah. your song Dreamer? Yeah. Well, that, you, that was with youth. Yeah. Well... We're going to do that song and call it Dreamer I Know. And basically they stole my songs and Visage and Blitz Club. And they stole everything. This bloke, if you go online, it's about a hundred terrible records by Visage. And none of them are any good. So I, I thought, what do I do? So I called up Midge and Midge said, look, Rusty, it's all about the music. Yeah. If you think Steve and some blokes can make better music than you and me. If you really think that, you've got something to worry about. <laughs> he goes, why don't you just make some more music? Yeah. So I called up Chris Payne, who was the original keyboard player with Gary Newman, and who was the keyboard player of Fade to Grey, to how it started. Yeah. And, he, and I said, have you got any music? And he goes, yeah, I've got a few things lying around. And he sent me um, some things lying around. And uh, and I've got this drum pattern. Put it to the um, keyboards. Added a bass line. Boom, 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 ba, boom, 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 ba. And then uh, it it started to become euphoric. You know, yeah. the music. It started to build up into something like Vienna, you know. And um, yeah. Chris said, "Oh, I've got." A, a choir singing like more or less like glory, glory, hallelujah. You know, I said, let me hear that. And, um, it was his wife actually. And, um, All right. and, uh, so the bottom line is like David Guetta, I mashed this idea up, turned it into <laughs> yeah. a song, um, phoned up this guy that I found called, um, Gerard O'Connor, who was in a band, and I said, look, I've got a couple of ideas. And yeah. one song is Evermore. One song is, um, I think I think it's Lonely Highway, which was, I had all these lyrics. So basically, I've done all these songs. I did them all, like, all here. Literally, I can literally write here with a microphone. Can you see that? Right, yeah. And a controller. And then I just drop nice. the beats in there. And then I, I sing. And then I sing... Not brilliantly, but I can, I can. Um, enough. Yeah, enough. Yeah. yeah, I've got an effect here. I've got some, is it here? Yeah, I've got this. So basically I can turn myself into Daft Punk. Yeah. A Roland V4, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can turn myself into Daft Punk. I'll get the little drums and I can hit my little drum pads. And then basically <laughs> I add it all, I mix it all, and then I send it to Midjure. And then he does, it's good, but it's not right. I love saying that. <laughs> And then uh, we uh, we made this song called Glorious, yeah, uh, which became Midjur's last single. Anyway, awesome. There's a band called Nightclub from LA that I absolutely love. I want to die in the disco, and I got hold of yeah. Emily, the singer, and I said I've written this song with Gerard, and uh, it's about two young kids living in a small town, and um, they want to run away to get reloaded. And I see it as a kind of Las Vegas type, you know, road yeah. movie type song, you know. And they go, yeah. oh, we're in Vegas next week. We'll make a video for it. And it's online. <laughs> it's called Evermore. And uh, she sings, she, she is a star, that girl. And, um, and I went on tour with Spanner Ballet. Yeah. And I said, Tony, Tony, I've got this song. And he's like, um, yeah, yeah, send it to my manager, send it to my manager. And it literally took about six months later, he came back, Rusty, that song's bloody great. Um, <laughs> the end is a bit crap, and I've come up with an idea. And he sent me, I've got it here, I could play it to you. Sometimes that an audience with, I play Tony, going, hello, Rusty, it's me, listen to this. <laughs> and, uh, and he sings the, the whole end section. 
So I, yeah. I, I put him down as a, as a writer of the song. And I said, can we get Steve Norman on sax? And um, I got hold of Steve Norman and I, and I did a remix. And he's on the yeah. remix because I'd already recorded the song. So basically, Tony Hadley did Lonely Highway. And then I had another song. I was out in a beta and I met this band. And they were called Now Then, Now Then. They come from Manchester and they were <laughs> lovely, lovely fellas. Lovely. They were very, very oasis, you know. <laughs> They were very yeah. oasis. And, and Ricky, Ricky, what a lovely fella. What a lovely fella, Ricky. <laughs> and um, I said, Ricky, let me hear all your songs. And basically, I did what David Getter does. I heard this bit of a song and I went, do, 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 do. It was like a pop song. I went, yeah. I want to do that, like, like Joy Division. <laughs> yeah, nice. And I did this, you know, sounds like Temptation, you know, that, that. Yeah. And then Russia did a little bit of a vocal, like, you know. I do a bit of a vocal, but I'm a bit hoarse because I've been drinking all night, you know. And, and he basically parties like there's no tomorrow in Ibiza. He'd become a very, very good friend. And uh, I said, look, I think I think we should send this to Peter Hook. And we did. Yeah. And Uki, Uki goes, it's bloody good, but it's not right. <laughs> and uh, he goes, I want to play some bass and put a bit of guitar on it. Is that all right? I go, okay, do what you bloody want, mate. And he comes back <laughs> and it's called The Other Side. And I love no. it. I love it. Oh, yeah, one minute. I'll just show you something. I okay. Really, um, yeah. And then one of my favourite photographs ever is Uki. Look at that with his factory, um, wow, yeah. factory shirt on. Right. It's really cool holding his base. I made yeah. it on vinyl, right? And it's on yeah. gold vinyl. Look at this, mate. Oh, beautiful, yeah. Yeah. And I pressed nice. up 300 copies and nobody bought it. <laughs> 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 so anyway, Not yet. And I Not got yet, all the though. words. I got all the words on it. And, uh, wow. and then Martin Youth, Glover, Youth from Killing mm-hmm. Joe. Yeah. He said, I love it, Rusty. Let me do a tripped out version. And it's on an album called uh, Music for Taking Drugs. <laughs> no, Music for <laughs> Getting High. I want to take you to the other side. <laughs> but basically, there's all people tripping out to that record, born in Ibiza. <laughs> um, yeah, so the bottom line is that record, Welcome to the Dance Floor, the album on vinyl, it got. Um, Accoladed, you know. So when yeah. when when they brought out Visage album number four, Visage album number five, Visage the orchestrated, Visage yeah. the remix, it was like forget that shit. Rusty Egan's <laughs> album's bloody amazing. It's got Midyear, Tony Hadley, Peter Hook, yeah. and then I did all these remixes. Welcome to the remix, and I put them all up on Bandcamp. And then all these DJs contacted me and going, oh, I love that song. And a few of them said, can I remix it? I went, yeah, Hi-Fi Sean and, you know, uh, Paul Goodyear, who is uh, San Fran Disco. If right. you follow him, every single tune you ever loved, he's done a remix of it. <laughs> and, um, and I went to San Francisco and I met him in 2018. He's wearing a Craftwork T-shirt. You're the reason I became a DJ. <laughs> 40 years later, he's still doing the same job. Um, so I know I go on a bit, but what happened was I had a second innings. And whereas okay. all my life and the career was all over, Spandau were coming back, Rewind yeah. was coming back, you know, all the 80s were coming back. And suddenly yeah. I'm on stage and um, Johnny H. Jazz, he's, he, he comes out on stage, Clark, and he goes, before we start, I'd just like everybody to meet Rusty Egan. I was standing there, right? And, I, and he calls yeah. me over. And he says, when I was 18, he signed me. He believed <laughs> in me. And wow. I want to say thank you to him tonight. And I was like, I forgot I signed him. <laughs> <laughs> his brother worked in the shop and played me his demo. And I went, bloody hell, he's good. So I gave him like 10,000 quid, which was a lot of money in those days. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, I'd signed um, also um, a bloke who ended up writing um, for S Club 7. <laughs> I accidentally <laughs> signed him. 
he was in another band, uh, Ellis Beggs and Howard. You remember remember them? They were yeah. like uh, uh, Beggs, Nick Beggs from Kajaguga. Yeah. They were very, very good musicians, Ellis Beggs and Howard. And, and uh, uh, Simon Ellis co-wrote... Um, don't stop moving to the daddy daddy beat. One of the yeah. big Saturday night songs that you don't want to play. <laughs> <laughs> Can you play S Club 7? <laughs> There's your bus, love. There's your bus. You're going to miss the bus. <laughs> it's the last bus. Get it. Um, so, no. Um, so, what happened was, because I had this radio show, and I found all these bands that were like, Rusty, we love the 80s and we've got a band. We bought a synthesizer and we've got one David Getter's finger, you know, <laughs> and uh, and they were really good. And yeah. um, I basically started telling everybody about all these bands, Vial Electrodes, and then I found this bloke called Chi Ming Lai and he's got a, a website called the Electricity Club. And right. uh, he's what you call a purist and he's honest, like me. And he'll go, Rusty, you were really good up until 1988. After that, I'm not interested. <laughs> and you'll go, nice. all right. <laughs> and you can't <laughs> tell him about anything after 19... 19- yeah. Well, actually, 1987, to be honest. And he, oh, house music, <laughs> don't even go there. You know? <laughs> so anyway, you get people like him who are really good, really informative. Yeah. And I even wanted him to help me write my book, uh, but he wasn't interested. Um, right, and I I don't want to do a book of just rubbish. I can talk that every night. I want you to do a yeah. very informative book, you know, mm. where you like like a, a train spotter's book of of music, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's all about the music, which could be the name of the book. Um, it's not about you; it's about me. Um, <laughs> so I know I talk a hell of a lot, but the point really is: is I was about to say. That I've got a second innings and I've yeah. got a new lease of life. And don't forget, I lost my wife, 25 years, three children. I haven't dealt with it. If I if I talk for another minute, I'll be a flood of tears. So oh, I bottled that one up and put it put it away and said, Don't go there. Don't okay. go there. Although she's all over my room next to my bed, all my photographs, everything. You know, everywhere, everywhere around my house, and pictures everywhere. You know, she's not she's not forgotten. I just can't go there emotionally. So I wrote a song called Ballet Dancer, which is on my album, and that explains mm. that relationship. And Love Is Coming My Way. I wrote that, which which I thought maybe maybe see see being in love for anyone that's watching this. It's not about you. It's about someone that loves you. It's about the receiving the love. Look what you get from a dog. Look what you get from a child. Look what you get. Unconditional, beautiful love. When you get home and the dog runs up to you and the kids run up to you, you know, and they love you, you know, and then the wife says, put the rubbish out, you idiot. (laughs) 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 Unconditional, beautiful love. And I'm a granddad now, I've got a daughter, granddaughter wonderful and um and and i love love and love is so big in my life but of course i lost the love of my life so i wrote i thought i could never love again another song mm. um which I, is about that so i am a bloke like everyone else looking for love but when you look at 2022 and 1988 um you could put your hands in the air at a rave and be in love. You can be in love every week, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I met my first wife and my second wife and loved them both dearly and married them both and had children with them both. I don't just go around falling in love. Yeah. I get married and do it and go the full hog. And, yeah. and the bottom line, the first one didn't work out and cost me dearly. And the second one did work out for about, 20 years but sickness got in the way of us and I think all those experiences when you hear Phil Collins got divorced and he wrote in the air tonight you know when you hear you know Marvin Gaye I want you I want you and you know that a very gaudy um, daughter you know and he came to London a broken man and you know and then he did sexual healing and 
Everybody wants love. I'm not talking about giving love. I could fall in love every day. Oh, my God, she's beautiful. I love you. No, receiving love is, is love is the drug, you know. And when you don't yeah. receive love and you're single, which is what Lonely Highway is about, um, and you see people that are in love, you're like, <laughs> oh, you know. Uh, but at the same time, if nine out of ten people said to you, are you happy? I say, I am a happy person. But I am like in heaven when I'm in love. I'm yeah. not a miserable person. I don't wake up in this beautiful place here, right, with the sun shining and I'm healthy and I'm a decent weight and I've got no debts, no loans, no, you know, cure people on my doorstep. On it. No, I am forever grateful to where I am today. But if, if I was loved, as I have been loved before, mm. if I had that, th then I would end my days, you know, like, yeah. wow. Because, because you know, that old one that you want to go to the top of the Empire State Building and share the view with someone, you know what I mean? Yeah, you don't want yeah. somebody going, I can't be asked. Oh, come on. I want to <laughs> see that. I want to come on. We're in New York with the Empire State <laughs> Building. Oh, who cares? You know, you've got to be with a compatible person. So, yeah. On my new album, I don't know if you're interested, but I wrote a song with Zane Griff. I don't know if you've heard of him. Right. Um, yeah. Two albums with Tony Visconti, and he worked with Midyear and Hans Zimmer, and he's an amazing guy. Uh, he's okay. working with um, Chris Payne, and right. they're working together on a load of music. He's very Bowie-esque, if you look at him. Oh, okay. Very Bowie-esque. Anyway, I wrote this song, and then Wolfgang Fleur reads the story. You know, right. Wolfgang talks like this, and so basically, the the the, the song is um, the story of my first love, right. my first teenage seventeen to twenty love. You know, I well, you never basically forget. tells yeah. the story, um, and it's beautiful. It's absolutely yeah. beautiful. So I think I just keep saying beautiful because I write beautiful music. Um, I don't write, you know, hard hard music like the anvil hard anymore <laughs> um although there is a, a track with chris Payne, Payne's double i.e david brooks have you heard of him he's gary newman's keyboard player yeah i've heard of gary brooks yeah, yeah. david brooks is on tour with gary newman right now played wembley on saturday mm. night yeah um uh he he features on on my album playing keyboards but on one song he's uh, a writer and soon he's going to be a co-writer because i'm rewriting the song and the song's yeah. called Beautiful Day. It's beautiful. <laughs> uh, it's a beautiful song. I like to collaborate. I like to do what David Getter did. Like I said, somebody could have a song. I'd just rearrange it, change it, add that, put that, do this, do that. I've got another song, and i got Andy Mackay from Roxy Music. One of nice, my yeah. favourite sax players ever. I've tried to get Gary Barnacle, who plays on I Thought I Could Never Love Again, plays on... Uh, all of Visage, Gary Barnacle plays the sax on uh, All of Visage, Love Glove, amazing sax yeah. on Love Glove. Uh, Steve Norman plays sax on um, on Lonely Highway. Um, and then uh, Earl Slick, the guitar player, I've got that him on a wow, track. Yeah. Have a bow -y yeah, and then I've got about, I've got 20 tracks I'm working on, not just one. Uh, I've got one with Vulcan, uh, Vulcan Milch, a uh, German guy, absolutely loved that. I got another one with Vandal Moon, if you check him out. He is fabulous. If you Have you heard of Synth Wave? It's a kind yeah. of uh, 1980s movie synth. That's, you know, that's based right, on yeah. Drive, you know, Drive, the soundtrack. Yeah, the film. Um, that kind of thing. I'm hoping to work with um, the guy from Groove Armada. And uh, Julia Bondar, who's on the Blitz album. Uh, Eric Stein from Cult With No Name. So basically what I'm saying is there is a load of great music. There's mm. people you've never heard of, like Bonobo playing Five Nights at the Albert Hall. Yeah. There's London Grammar, who are just totally unique, you know. They're doing well, yeah. Uh, the there's Boy Harsha. There's um, Confidence Man. Uh, you know, there is so much amazing music that if Rusty Egan was in the Blitz Club today and he was 20 years old, 
he would be playing this music in Shoreditch to young <laughs> 20 to you know year old people and yeah. um, putting it together, I hope, creatively and having a bit of a stage and saying, here's the next band of ballet. Now, that entire concept, what I just told you right now, yeah. I tried to sell to the box. Have you heard of the box? No, it's what's the, the box? the coolest club in London and New York. Okay. The box London and the box right. New York. Open till about 5 a.m. No sign outside. You can't find it unless you're in with the in crowd. You can't get <laughs> in unless you're on the guest list. It's everything right. that the Blitz created in the 80s, meaning yeah. outside was homophobia, violence, thugs, football fans, and you didn't want to be there. And you need to scurry off into a dark alleyway, into a place that nobody knows where it is, and you hear the music you love. That is happening yeah. today at the box. Except right. I can't get in. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, during COVID, to... some people did a, a meme. And the right. meme was a picture of a 50-pound note. And it said, this is the new COVID pass to get you into the coolest clubs in London. Uh, <laughs> because basically, m- clubs are all about money now. Yeah, it's not the club; it's the landlord. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's the rents, the rent, overheads, the yeah. overheads. You know. Yeah. You know. I mean, so was it quite cheap? Just jumping back a little bit, when you got like the the Blitz and Billies, were they were they cheap to rent? Yeah, in? Was it? It, it was, was student night, mate. Fifty p for a drink, oh, pound to get in. That was it. You know, it and the overheads. And, with the overheads and cheap if, for the rent. If the club tried to put the price up, we said we're going somewhere else. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. We did it a couple of times, Club for Heroes moved. And then we got offered this deal from Coco, which is yeah. uh, the Candle Palace. And uh, to go back to the Steve Strange story, I basically DJed the Candle Palace, booked all the DJs and booked all the acts, and Carol Hayes did all the PR and marketing. Steve literally got paid a £1,000 a week to go to a club. He didn't wow. actually do anything. He anyway, up, the yeah. owners of the club said, right, New deal. We only want you and Carol. Right. And I said, but Steve's my partner. You can give him a grand a week out of your share, mate. Hmm. We want to do a deal with you and Carol because you are the two that make it happen. And I said, it's Steve and me or nothing. So they said, okay. And then they had him arrested and ripped up the contract. I stuck with Steve. I stuck with him then. And they said, according to our contract, he's been uh, selling drugs or taking drugs or something. And we can't be in business for you. And they ripped up the contract. And uh, I lost a grand a week in 1982. (laughs) Um, But um, I stuck with him. Anyway, um, on his deathbed, the owner of that club tried to make amends to me and give me the Limelight Club. Have you heard of that? No. Was that London or New York? Yeah, London, yeah. And it's in Shaftesbury Avenue, and he owned it. Wow. And it's, this wow. is a funny story. So basically, he's on his deathbed. He's hugging me. Every time he shook my hand, he had 500 quid in it. He just shook my hand like a – and it was 500 yeah. quid. And he was going, Rusty, I love you. I'm sorry what we had to do, but we couldn't keep paying that. They were paying it a fortune. It was a contract. They had yeah. to pay it a fortune. You know what I mean? So, yeah, 5,000 yeah. a week, you know, it was like a ridiculous amount of money, you know. But the place was absolutely happening, you know, and I was mm. the guy doing it all. We just want to do a deal with you, forget all that other lot, you know. Be, take shares in our company, that kind of thing. Anyway, yeah. he was making an amend. And um, I, want to, I, want, I want to give you the club. He was dying. Wow. Lovely man. And uh, as I would leave, having hugged him and, I went to his 70th birthday party, met his daughter and son. And I was in with the family and he was making this amend. And it was an amazingly beautiful thing. And then when I get out to the car, a lawyer would go, everything he said to you doesn't mean anything legally because he... (laughs) 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 I love it. Yeah, he's got Alzheimer's and it won't stand up in court, you know. So one minute I'm a multi-millionaire, the next minute I'm just getting back in the car and going to London. Just rusty again. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So if anyone wants to check out your music, where would they find it? Where's the best place oh, to get it? On well, your Mixcloud? 
believe it or not, um, I put a lot of stuff on Mixcloud, but there's a lot of uh, laws where you can't upload things. I've just done a Duran Duran mix, all of me. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's managed to stay on Mixcloud and Soundcloud. But yeah. I did a I did a Spanda ballet one, and um, that got taken down. So there's, a, right. there's another one on Mixcloud, and I and I and I did U two in the uh, in the 2018. I did some U2 mixes that were never released. They're all on Rusty right. Egan's Mixed Cloud. But if you want to actually yep. download and buy and own my music, do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> well, you go to Juno Download and you can get FLAC, WAV, MP3, you know, you can get all the, the bit. But if you go to Bandcamp, you can literally download my entire discography in there for about nice. 30 quid, something like that. And there's like awesome, about yeah. 70 tracks with Tony Hadley, everything. I mean, my mu- music is bloody worthless, isn't it? Bloody worthless. <laughs> um, but I just keep making it. I just keep yeah. making it. Um, I'm going to play Rewind the Pink Flamingo, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do an updated Blitz Club DJ set. And, oh, and that means there's an album called Blitz from the documentary. And I remade yep. Ronnie. I remastered right, yeah. Shock. I remade Fade to Grey. Awesome. At, with Chris Payne. It's all real quality, quality music. And I wrote a song called When We Were Young. And I sing it yeah. with my little magic box. It's Tuesday <laughs> night. And I'm ready for some fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. And it's called When We Were Young. Nice. And I'll tell you a story about that. I was in Ibiza with Steve Norman when I wrote that. And mm. the music beats I got from B-Movie, uh, right. Paul right. Stratum. And Paul Stratum co-wrote here with me for Dido. And, right. and um, no, we're a girl. So anyway, he's also on my remixes on Bandcamp. He sent me this beat and then I wrote the song, all the words, yeah. sang it. And as I'm writing it, Steve Norman in the same flat. We shared a flat for the summer in Ibiza. It goes, I wrote the words, um, we danced to Iggy, Bowie and Boland. Oh, yeah. All right. When he goes, crap. No, wait a minute. <laughs> in the club, our future felt brighter. We danced to the synthesizer. And I said, but Steve, it's true. We did dance to the sympathizer <laughs> and we did dance to Iggy, Bowie and Boland. All right? Yeah. <laughs> so all I do is write, it's Tuesday night and we were ready yeah. for some fun and we fell in love. Every week I fell in love and I write songs that are real. I don't want to go off into some fantasy world of, uh, you know, it's real. So that yeah. song is one of, one of my most popular songs, actually. When we were young, <laughs> people are loving it. So, if I wasn't here and I'd pop me clogs, yeah, I think you know when you trend on Twitter or something, and they go, "Oh, Rusty Egg and um, Visage Blitz Club uh, DJ One Finger David <laughs> um, popped his clogs." Uh, check out his music. I think a load of people would check out my music and say, "Bloody hell! How did I miss that?" You know? Yeah. So the other day I did a quote and I said, I think I'm making better music today than I did in the eighties. Yeah. But the record industry yeah. only looks at people when they're 20. Yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. Get longevity out of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. But I, I, I think if you listen to the last ABC album, it's bloody brilliant. Yeah. They made some great, you know, the Duran Duran made a new album. All of me is a bloody brilliant song. And you could go on and on, couldn't you? There's so many big yeah. midgers last album, you know. All these people really are continuing good, yeah. to make great OMD. My God. Yeah. You know, Crawford haven't made a new record in 20 <laughs> years. But you know, a lot of people uh, a lot of people are uh, Howard Jones, uh, yeah. Tom, Nick Tom yeah. Thompson yeah. twins. I mean, everybody's making music that you know. Everybody that's on stage at Rewind is saying, and here's my new album. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Kim Wilde, you know. So, yeah, yeah. Everyone's making music again. Which is 
more than brilliant. It's what you want, isn't it? It's what you want. Well, if you make it, you love it and you stand by it. But when you perform, you still have to play all your old hits, mate. We haven't come here with your new album. All right, Tony. I know you're looking at the moon, but we want bloody true, don't true. we? Give them a new album. It's brilliant. We know that, Tony. Yeah. yeah. Well, Russ, it's been lovely talking today, mate. I've had a wonderful chat with you. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Thanks for talking to me today. It's been incredible. Are you going to share this podcast? I am going to share this podcast. Are you yeah. going to say didn't get a word in? I'm going to say um, the tyr- like the Tyronus Rex of conversation is <laughs> Rusty Higgins. And, and maybe you could add the a typhoon. tag. If you want to hear more, yeah, watch out for an audience with Rusty Egan. I will do. Yeah, definitely. It won't, as David Bowie said, it won't be boring. Remember? <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And um, just to end pop me clocks we're losing so many great people you know yeah, it's true, every yeah. week i'm like oh no you know oh janice long what a beautiful woman i've only talked to her the other day you know and yeah. every day the sun is shining our kids are grown up you go for a health check you, you know you've got to have an attitude of gratitude now we, we we danced in the 80s. We had kids and grafted in the 90s and noughties. <laughs> and we're dancing again. You know, nice. and we're all out there going to festivals like Rewind. And we just have yeah. to share the positivity because you don't know how many days you've got left, you know. It's true, yeah. And uh, Jackie Brambles interviewed me. And... Uh, they sent me a questionnaire saying, what song would you like played at your funeral? I said, I've got to think of that now. I've actually got to think of that, you know. And would it be uplifting and euphoric, you know. Yeah. Sing if you're glad to be gay. <laughs> riders on the storm. Yeah, not riders on the storm. No, I actually yeah. asked, I actually said, if you go on YouTube and you put in Brian Eno, Brian Eno, music for airport, six hours stretched version. What? Wow. I've, heard, I've got the vinyl somewhere. Yeah, yeah but there's a six-hour version. And what I wow. do is I put on headphones at night and I fall asleep to this ambient music. Yeah. And what I said in this Jackie Brambles questionnaire, which I never actually got to say on the actual podcast, which was... If you put on, if you're at my funeral and you put on this six hour version of Peter Music and people can leave straight away. They've been in there for half an hour. Oh, bloody hell, come on. <laughs> yeah, it won't even be a funeral, it'll be a cremation. Come on, just talk to you. Yeah. You know, I've got to get out. I'm too hot. I'm too hot. <laughs> I've got to for a pint. Let's get to the wake. <laughs> but if you actually stood there and said goodbye while Brian Eno's music was playing, in the background, this ambient piece of music that goes on forever. Yeah. My message in that would be music will outlive all of us. We may nice. all be gone, but we will still listen to your music. You know, and like, I'm still yeah, listening nice. to David Bowie's music. I won't ever stop listening to Kraftwerk. Exactly. I won't yeah. ever stop listening to the people that made the music, that soundtrack of my life. Even when I'm 78 years old and I'll be just, I've got to put on that album. <laughs> I've got yeah. to listen to that album. And I think if 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 you if I go to a, a funeral or a wake and I was not invited to Steve Strangers and I was with Spandau in Cardiff at the time and I got told you've been told by the family you're not welcome. I wow. had to sit in a hotel room while that was going on and I had to think of all the good times and I had to remove oh she stole yes. my money and I had to think of the good times and I think we've had good times and yeah. when we go to Rewind Festival we relive those good times and if they yeah. want to hear crappy horrible music <laughs> It's raining it. men, and they're all dressed up, and that's the blokes. All the blokes. That's are right. Dressed yeah. Up. <laughs> if you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to subscribe and leave us a review.